The sea has always been an irresistible enigma to man. Penetration deep within the hostile environment of this alien world is difficult and dangerous. This planet's last frontier, however, is finally yielding its long-held secrets to man's persistent and inventive searching. The Trieste, the Dolphin, and other small deep-diving submersibles are partially fulfilling urgent demands today for freer, deeper, and more extensive exploration of the floor of the ocean. But for engineers and scientists to spend sufficient time deep beneath the water to perform meaningful tasks, pressure chambers must be built to test the array of sophisticated gear that will sustain them in their deep sea research. The idea of a deep ocean pressure chamber was launched at the Naval Ship Research and Development Laboratory, Annapolis, Maryland. From the Navy and industry, dedicated design engineers, metallurgists, welding experts, and ocean engineers pool their respective talents in an all-out effort to devise a suitable seawater testing tank. The concept of a deep ocean pressure testing laboratory had already been formulated and a model built. There was space allocated for pressure tanks of various sizes, pumps, coolers, air compressors, transformers, and water storage tanks. The largest pressure tank envisioned would need a long test life at simulated deep ocean conditions, two million cycles at 9,000 feet, and capable of several thousand cycles at 26,000 feet. Gradually, plans emerged for constructing a mammoth testing chamber. Never before had such enormous size and pressure been united in one facility. It was one of a kind. The time was ready to convert plans to hardware. The Sun Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company in Chester, Pennsylvania was awarded the contract to build the deep submergence test chamber. The company's experience in building and handling heavy structures at its waterfront location proved a valuable asset in assembling and transporting the device that would weigh 750 tons, more than three locomotives. In a one-tenth scale wooden mock-up, details of the chamber can be clearly seen. Nine individual forgings welded together comprise the basic 37-foot long chamber. The outside diameter is 16 feet 9 inches. Five additional forgings weighing from 23 to 68 tons each will be shrink-fitted over this chamber to provide additional strength. The open end of the cylinder will be fitted with a movable plug weighing well over 100 tons. A high strength alloy steel was chosen as the material for the chamber's main body. Since this metal had never been welded in the extreme thicknesses required, up to 21 inches, special butt welding techniques and groove configurations for the thick sections were developed. As many as 750 passes on the automatic welder were required on each seam. These passes, together with other jointings, total nearly 50 miles of welding. Weld fillets around the chamber collar are ground to specifications. Here, using a metal inert gas technique, the chamber interior is overlaid with nearly a half inch of well-deposited Monel metal. This metal combination is designed to resist seawater corrosion. In one test for the detection of flaws, iron filings are dusted onto the surface of the chamber, then exposed to a powerful magnet. The iron filings collect around the flaws. In a different technique, a red dye is painted on the metal surface, then wiped off. A layer of white paint is sprayed over the same area, 
If the red dye bleeds through, a flaw is detected. The defect, immediately noticeable, is then repaired. Because of the extreme thickness of the chamber walls, a third flaw detection technique was applied to ensure structural integrity. Ultrasonic detection techniques, first developed in Germany and perfected here, were employed to expose defects before the chamber interior was lined with Monel. The size, weight, and unique characteristics of such a behemoth demanded special testing methods. However, fabrication of the chamber and shrink rings pose no particular problems for the manufacturer. By late fall, ring forgings were being prepared for assembly. A 23-ton shrink ring emerges from the oven like some huge pastry. Each of the rings is heated in a gas-fired chamber the size of a small house in order that it will expand sufficiently to slip freely over the chamber body. The temperature was constantly checked during the three-block, five-minute rail ride to the assembly site to make certain that it remained well within the 300 to 750 degree range. Below 300 degrees, the ring would contract and not fit properly over the chamber forging. At the chamber assembly location, each ring, fresh from the oven, was mounted on the chamber body and, when cooled, gripped it, never to come off. Possible door or plug designs for closing and locking the chamber were considered. The system finally chosen included a huge flat plug weighing over 100 tons and incorporating eight steel wedges or shear blocks, each weighing two tons. When extended into a groove in the chamber wall, the shear blocks lock the plug in place. This precision closing device mounted on a movable frame, operates with a clearance margin of 1 32nd of an inch and takes seven hours to completely fit and seal. With the turn of the seasons, the shipyard is gripped in the clutch of winter. But unlike the quiet cove of the hibernating bear, which it more than faintly resembles, the pressure chamber shelter remains a bustle of activity. 